Thank you, Nancy, and uh, good evening to everyone. Uh, maybe I should acknowledge uh, Valentina, Marianne, of course, Timmy, Nancy, Bev, Lulu, Nina, Melvin, and of course, the LGUs who are here. And I'd like to mention them by name. Tagaytay, Tagig, Navota, Cebu, Cavite, Manila, Cotabato, Rizal, Olongapo, Palawan, Samar, and Bulacan. You know, I'm deeply honored to be here to give you a keynote. And as you can see from the title, I'm sure you all know about the Philippine Health System, and you all know about the National Immunization Program. And therefore, I thought that uh, I would look at both the health system as well as the National Immunization Program from the lens of COVID vaccination. I spent the last three years really observing COVID through Zoom conferences, talks, reading, writing. In fact, editing two books on COVID. And at the end of it all, I've sort of simplified the story for myself. The story of the spread of COVID and eventually its decline as a pandemic. So what's the story? Hang on, we should be We should be moving towards the next slide, but uh, let me see if I could do this. Wait. There. But what's the story of COVID? Okay. I'm sure you're familiar with this curve. It tells you about the steady rise of COVID, and this was the first 10 months. Okay, and if you look at that, this is from our world in data. In this curve, it's 200,000. That would eventually reach 4 million as of today. Through 2020, 2021, surges with variants. And one of the messages of this slide is that while our cases kept rising, early on, our neighbors were able to flatten the curve. And what was the reason for that? Well, you might say they were probably better prepared and they had the tools to flatten the curve, including digital tools for contact tracing. But after a very disastrous 2021, we actually turned the corner and this is the story of COVID vaccination, which has many facets, many components to be assembled. And therefore, when you listen to the story of COVID vaccination, think about the National Immunization Program, how things are put together, and who actually put things together not just individuals, but organizations and partnerships. So this is an appropriate first slide. You see there all of the vaccines that our country produced, procured, not produced. And the message of this slide was that we had to fight a very tight global supply particularly early in 2021. And the reason there are so many vaccines in that list is because our government, with advice from private sector and discussions among themselves, decided to use the portfolio approach. In the face of tight supply, Go to as many suppliers as you can 
to buy the vaccines you need. And also go to COVAX. And that's why by October of 2021, Secretary Charlie Valdez, who would negotiate with the manufacturers, said we had overcome the challenge of vaccine shortages. Aside from procurement, and sorry for the small print, there's the story of allocation. And look at the bottom of the second column. You see that number? 77 million. Think that our system had to vaccinate 77 million, 70% 70 of the projected, you know, 2021 population. When this health system was used to vaccinating only 2 million infants a year in the national immunization program. This is how steep the mountain we had to climb. 77 million. And when you think of that, and you look at this table, you have to think about allocating vaccines to 17 regions. You had to prioritize the regions. And we prioritized NCR plus eight because that was the epicenter of the pandemic. Think about the daily logistics to supply vaccines to all of these places. Think about all of the flights that had to go every day or every other day. Think about the cold chain that had to be prepared, particularly some vaccines needed to, to be stored at Minus, what, 70, 80 degrees. Think about the reporting and the monitoring of performance for the vaccine rollout. When you think of that, you would say that this was a golden period in our vaccination history, where national government, local government, and private sector really worked very closely to reach the target. And this next slide shows you what that target was in 2021. We wanted a better Christmas by November 27, 2021. And as you can see, there were clear targets. This is NCR. You had to target herd immunity, 70%, 20 million. You had a clear timeline, 100 days, 180 days, six months to do 20 million vaccinations in NCR. And then you had an expanded geography, NCR plus eight. When you think about the rollout details, again, sorry for the small print, but look at the green band at the top. You'll see there all of the details that needed to be attended to. We had talked about the targets and the supply. Think about the vaccination sites that had to be set up. Whether mega sites in malls, the regular health centers, mobile sites, pop-up sites, think about the staffing for those sites, and think about the supply chain so that there were vaccines in those sites. A Jollibee logistics expert helped develop the plan for the supply chain. Can you imagine Jollibee running out of Chicken Joy? You know, that should never happen. So you couldn't have any stock outs for your vaccines. Think about the priority groups that had to be lined up, particularly in the early days when there were supply shortages. 
And then think about the vaccine hesitancy and the brand preference that needed to be managed as well. So the details of those rollout were so immense and challenging. We should be proud at what we achieved. But this was supported by the communications campaign. And if you look at this slide, there are two rows there. The upper row is the government campaign. And if you look at that, and I'm not a millennial, but of course, BIDA, which is an acronym for, if you remember, Bawal ang hindi magmask. Sanitize, mga kamay, lumistansya, and then alamin ang tamang information. Be the hero. And of course, rest back, which is a combination of two words. Rest back, which is what? Support, get back at, and bakuna. So very militant messages. And then think about the second line, which was the private sector campaign of Ingat Angat. Tayong lahat. But the, the communications campaign monitored the willingness and unwillingness of the population. And in May 2021, the top third of the population were willing. The bottom third were unwilling. And in between was undecided. Imagine that, 30% only, 32 to be exact, were willing. And the rest were either undecided or unwilling. By December 2021, we had moved the willing to 87% and the unwilling to 8%. And the middle undecided almost disappeared. So the communications campaign showed messages of hope, messages of care, messages of hope, uh, messages of care, messages of solidarity, and of course even militancy. Hope, angat, ingat, care, solidarity, bayanihan, okay, and militancy, you know, bida. And of course, the message of trust. This is a fine acronym to, to use, but you can't read the small print. But on the top, transparency and reliability on the supply side. So that people know what you know you're offering. Understanding and stigma in the middle. This is the people understanding the campaign, understanding why they need to be vaccinated, and eventually abandoning the stigma that comes with vaccine hesitancy and even the aftermath of the vaccine. And finally, good testimonials. So in the end, we reached our goal. And this slide shows you the vaccines administered as of March 25, 2022. Just look at the, the red circles at the bottom. That slide says 72%. 65 million vaccinated. By this time, hospital admissions for COVID had disappeared practically. And we were already, in a sense, almost back to normal. Remember, that was the period of the campaign. And people would assemble in their thousands to campaign. 
And there were no outbreaks at that time. But note too those two little circles. There were some regions that were left behind. Region 12 and Barm, which tells us that the work is never done if there are those that are left behind. So the message really was this, that we did succeed gloriously, I'd say, for our vaccination program against COVID. And we should remember these lessons, particularly the lesson that we have to work together. Because the whole program has to hang together. Every agency, every level of government has to do their role. You fail at any one of these levels and your vaccination coverage declines. There was private sector support throughout the, the whole campaign and throughout the whole fight against COVID. From communications to administration, strategic planning, supply chain management, data, data dashboards, private sector, unconditionally helped. And that's something that we should think about also for the National Immunization Program. And these are the corporate private sector players who play the role. You can see very big names there. And what happened there was they committed their, their experts to work in the campaign. You know, the, the number two, number three of McDonald's was doing the communications. The logistician of Jollibee was actually working out the supply chain. Uh, executives from Ayala were helping with the strategic planning. And so on and so forth. With Metro Pacific, Phil Invest helped out with the developing the, the dashboard. And so in the end, I think we succeeded. And this is a slogan that I had actually missed because this is the slogan of the song, We Heal As One, which was released on March 26, 2020. Practically, you know, I, I, I think I ignored it because this was the time when we were in lockdown and everything was confusing. It's a nice song, but the worst was still to come. But here we are now in a better place. So as we reflect on the COVID vaccination program, we now faced with a challenge that has existed for many years. Our goal must be to reverse this decline. But really the message of this keynote is that we can do it. And we have done it. And therefore we have to be able to pool our will and our resources to do it all over again. And if we were a private sector company, why not? Improve quality, improve efficiency, lower cost. That's really the whole idea for improving of services. And so to summarize, we can conclude. It was COVID-19 vaccination that lifted the country against COVID. Now all of our other efforts you know, didn't do as well. And the success of the COVID-19 program was in working together, performing respective roles well. 
Central government did strategic planning, consultation with stakeholders, procured vaccines, organized the rollout, among other things. Local governments implemented the vaccination program, including the mayors. And the private sector provided support in all phases of the program. So we heal as one, and by working together, we beat COVID. But how are we going to reverse the declining coverage of the national immunization program? I would say apply the lessons learned and work together on, I would say, three things. Address vaccine hesitancy, because that's still there through better risk communication and trust building. The trust building is so important because without the trust building, the risk communication falls flat. This is the supply side. Ensure excellent and reliable operations from planning, procurement, to actual jobbing of the target group. And for new vaccines, ensure regulatory oversight, community preparations, and effective rollout. So we ask, can the vaccination program be managed better? Can we increase quality and efficiency and decrease cost and waste? I think we can. And the returns are lives saved, disability prevented, better quality of life for millions of Filipinos. So I end with this slide that talks about Bayanihan Pakunahan. Ligtas, Takas, Buong Pinas. Thank you, and uh, we're going to end literally with a keynote and a song that uh, we can listen. Handog namin itong kantang to para sa lahat ng Pilipino. Tayo na po magkais at magtulungan para malagpasan po natin ang pagsubok na ito. Stay home. Tara, sabay-sabay nating awitin.
isa sa ating dasal Lahing nagpapatunay na tayo'y makatao pa For us to prove